a caregiving tip from Jen of Fading Memories and Jincy Hines, an all's author. Okay, let's go for our walk. Got it, honey? Okay, good. I don't want this thing anymore. Hi. (laughs) Jincy, do you have any suggestions on how I can help my husband keep his mask on and not hug everybody on the street when we're walking? Jen, I'm glad you asked. As a matter of fact, I do have a few ideas. Um, Well, I have to say, masks fit everyone differently. I never knew it, but I'm pretty sure this ear must be higher than this ear. Not that I would ever measure it, but every time I wear a mask, it's the pulling more on that side. So I personally have several different styles of masks. I have this cute one when I, that I bought off of Etsy when I thought I was a bad wife and mother because I didn't know we needed masks and suddenly we did. And they're like a cotton fabric on the outside and they're flannel on the inside, which sounds bad, but I actually wore one of these in Texas and it was great. And that was in July. I have these others that a friend has made that are custom made. And they have the little wire in the nose. And they actually have a pocket I could put in another filter that I hope I never need. And in all honesty, they're great. But for me, I had to take another little tuck in them down here. So getting the fit right is very important as well. I mean, if if it's not comfortable, he's not going to wear it. Now, my husband likes this one. Hey. It works. If he wears it, I'm happy. But he also has some that were made by my friends, and they're very nice and stylish, you know. And then, of course, we could go with the trusty bandana. Oh, worn properly, of course. <laughs> now, of course, there's pros and cons to all of them, and people say, oh, a bandana's not good enough. But, okay, this or this, which one's going to be a better choice? Um, one of my friends sent us these. They're like the ear extenders. If they work for you, great. It's not my favorite thing, but, you know, you put it through your mask like this. I'll give you a quick demo here. So you would put it along like this and it's um, supposed to like sit on the back of your head and somehow not rub over your ears. But I must have a weird head because I think it still rubs on my ear and it just makes the mask feel tighter. So that doesn't work great for me, but that's okay. Um, you need to model the behavior. You can't expect them to wear a mask if you're not willing to do it. And pretty much when we go outside for a walk, Even though if it's just the two of us walking, I don't feel my husband and I need to wear a mask. We're together in the house, but I'll say, hey, grab a mask. That way if we run into some people, you got one, just tuck it in your pocket. Um, Keep the masks everywhere. We have a little table by the front door. So as you walk out of the house, they're right there. I also keep, you know, like an extra mask in my purse. Not that I'm ever going anywhere with my purse lately or in my glove compartment. See prior statements. But I think those are the big things. And then a secret to the masks again I have found I have much better results if I don't throw them in the dryer. Hmm. They seem to shrink a little, either the fabric or maybe it's the elastic. I'm not sure. But when I throw them in the dryer, they don't seem to fit as well later. So I'm trying to, if I throw them in the washer, sometimes I put them in a bag. Sometimes I don't. Then I have to scavenger hunt to find them. Or sometimes I'll just, you know, at the end of the day, when I know I'm not going out again, when I wash my hands after I've rinsed them, I wash them again. And this time the mask is in them. And then I just rinse it out, you know, hang it, in, you know, roll it in a towel to dry for a little bit, hang it in the bathroom. And if it's your favorite mask, it'll be dry by the next day, quite frankly. Now, as far as the not touching, you know, and not hugging and all that, um, you know, a lot of it takes reminding. Sometimes it's like, here, let me hold your hand. Because if you hold their hand, you've got them back with you. Uh, my husband, actually, he's almost funny because he's more than willing to keep his distance from people when we run into them. Right. My husband puts on his mask and then keeps walking pretty fast past me. But when we were in um, the airport, as I said, we were in Texas earlier this month. And when we were in line to get on the plane to come home, they weren't, there wasn't a lot of social distancing in the line. And so, you know, you just do what you always do without thinking of it. You stand what would now be too close to the person in front of you. So I just grabbed his backpack and pulled him back and said, no, no, social distancing. And then he went into Home Depot and made a return one day and came home and said, oh, I needed some things, but I didn't buy any of them because the people were in line, but there was no distance between them. Mm. So, you know, I think it just, a lot of it takes, okay, you need to do this. We're going somewhere. We need to do this. If you're just running an errand, maybe they can stay home if they really don't feel like wearing a mask or, you know, I mean, a couple of times he said, I'll just sit in the car. You know, I mean, if you can get a nice breeze going, it feels great. Like if you're going to the grocery store with me, you got to wear a mask. So I think you just have to model the behavior, lay down the law, 
and be flexible enough to say you can stay home or to change your own plans and go, well, I'm not going. But I think the biggest thing is to find something that works for them. So yeah. I don't know if those suggestions will help you at all, but. Well, they're worth trying. We hope you enjoyed this caregiving tip from Jincy and Jen.